welcome to the labyrinth i'm your host pratham pado my guest today is gopal krishna baliga he is a businessman he's an entrepreneur an investor and he has numerous hobbies and passions he is into the inverter manufacturing business right here in mangalore he has numerous hobbies which include photography and hiking and he is also an avid cyclist so without any further ado let's begin but before we do i want to just remind my audience that if you find this podcast useful do like share subscribe leave a comment below uh mr gopal krishna waliga welcome to the labyrinth how are you doing uh, fine pratham thank you okay uh so can you tell us a little bit about yourself because i don't know you very well like uh where were you born and how was your upbringing yeah okay. uh, i was born in a uh, you can say a lower middle class family only we only reason we say lower middle class is we don't want to admit that uh, we are we were poor yeah. <laughs> okay so in mangalore itself born and brought up here uh, schooling here then uh, suratkal engineering college uh, electronics uh, graduate then mangalore university mba graduate then i started my own uh, enterprise that is uh, uh, manufacturing inverters and uh, other things from pretty well settled here in mangalore itself okay so when did you start this business power mate that was in 1982 Now it okay. is 41 years. 41 years. Okay. Uh, what are the kind of services that you provide? Uh, we started with various other things actually. We, we did not start with inverters. We st- uh, when we started, uh, uh, suddenly TV got introduced into the market. That time, uh, people who were established uh, uh, were busy with their own activity. Hmm. I was new. I got a boost. So I started with the uh, TV accessories, antennas, stabilizers. Then uh, went on to inverters. Then as the market saturated, the TV market saturated, uh, I concentrated only on inverters. Okay. Then uh, UPS systems, and uh, that has been the journey. And uh, oh. along the way i moved from a rented place of about 150 square feet to a own place and right now i am 64 so i am thinking of why to continue my two sons are employed in it in bangalore So why to they are, they are married and uh, their spouse is also working there so i am oh. slightly cutting down and rented out the excess space to outsiders that building okay. so you are planning to slowly retire now uh, sort of you can say that okay and throughout your life you have been uh, surrounded by electronics you studied electronics and your uh, manufacturing electronics providing service in electronics field yes okay okay um uh, so you did your schooling in canra right yeah i started in canra main uh, primary school uh, then went went on to teachers training school in palmata uh, that is near uh, jyoti talkis earlier jyoti talkis okay then i came to canra urwa from there uh government college what we used to call at that time now it is called university college for puc then on to engineering uh, krc what we used to call them hmm. now it is nitk then mangalore university okay so you have been born and brought up you lived in mangalore your entire life you started your business in the 80s yes. uh, even pre liberalization so yes. how has mangalore changed from your lens uh, mangalore has changed for the better i should say in the sense uh, when we started 
it was not only difficult for us but it was difficult for other people also in the sense if we wanted employees i would just put a advertisement on a newspaper uh, let us say i wanted a technician or a uh, office uh, assistant or a clerk or someone i would put a advertisement in a local newspaper and i, I would get uh, 100 applications and uh, i can just throw away 50 applications without looking at them. Mm. which means and uh, slowly as it progresses now now to get one uh, office assistant i will have to put 5 uh, to 10 ads mm. so what i can say is i can say it is difficult for me to get employees on the other hand for those people looking for employment now it is so easier mm. and the growth around us uh, anybody who has stayed around here has witnessed infrastructure development and other things so growth has been there so along with growth we get the pollution uh, noise and other things that is part and parcel of life can't help it we can't have both the worlds yeah. but it has always been better uh, now than it was earlier okay okay so business opportunities employment has improved in your view in the past few decades yes yes um and uh, you are in the inverter business uh, one thing that i can think of the first thing that comes to my mind when i think inverter is power cuts you now when power cuts are there inverter are important yes. uh, in your experience of being in the inverter business for so many decades uh, how has power cuts changed has power cuts increased or reduced is our local government better now or worse now uh, we can't say now or previous or things like that that comes into the political domain uh, not only that but uh, what we have seen is the progress has been gradual mm. like when uh, i started my career uh, suppose i were to drive from here to uh, say let us say udupi mm. on the way we would see in the evening half the half of the place low voltage to all the dim dim lights throughout the road mm. and power cuts were rampant mm. and uh, slowly that has improved over the years past liberalization uh, it has improved now the now we don't find places where you get uh, something like 100 volts 120 volts even in cities we used to get uh, 170 160 volts at that time right now you don't find that right now you don't find uh, much power cuts few are there but uh, not as rampant as it was then mm. so yeah. power cuts have reduced uh, drastically okay and uh, okay. along with all the infrastructure uh, power scenery also has improved okay okay uh, so you earlier said that it is <clears throat> it is easier to find employment today than before Uh, yes. what about entrepreneurship is it easier to be an entrepreneur in mangalore easier now and what what kind of advice would you give for people no, def- uh, going into this field definitely now there are more opportunities than what we had when the general economy go goes up mm. we also tend to go so and uh, economy goes up there are more uh, opportunities mm. uh but along with that comes uh, competition from uh, mm. large industries who will compete uh, in the bigger market mm. but then we have to find a niche somewhere mm. uh, what we call as a niche market some mm. specialty which others cannot provide mm. if you can hold on to that there is market for the, anything and uh, today the entrepreneurship uh, possibilities are innumerable we didn't have that at that time uh, that much opportunity was not there because the uh, buying power was less economy was not uh, that much developed right now it has grown on a continuous basis especially post liberalization and uh, definitely any field you take when uh, when i say there is shortage of employees hmm. 
what it means is anybody willing to do anything there is opportunity okay yeah Th- that is a definition of uh, entrepreneurship okay yeah uh, and um, over the past few years we are noticing ever since post uh, lockdowns uh, work from many people from big cities like bangalore mumbai are returning back to mangalore they are doing work from home from here and these people they earn a lot and they live in mangalore they save a lot and they have to spend that money here so we are seeing different trends now that and they are having yes that is an additional trend since last uh, few years yeah yes yeah and i'm also noticing this because i even i work for a bangalore company have not seen the inside of an office in the past 3 years been working from home itself and whatever money i earn i have to spend it here itself and uh, and people have a lot of time these people this corporate employees like even myself we don't know what to do with this additional hours we think okay where should we invest our time where should we invest our money uh, should we go into business is it risky is our eight hours job not enough so for people like me for pe- young people who have a lot of time in their hands what kind of advice would you give uh, definitely you have to uh, see uh, we say knowledge is power mm. and then uh, next step is applied knowledge is power mm. but uh, general knowledge as such uh, won't take us anywhere mm. we will have to have knowledge in specific uh, uh, skills or specific uh, some kind of a, what i said uh, niche mm-hmm. some kind of a specialty which others don't have and that specialty youngsters have to used in that spare time mm-hmm. like you know everything about the world maybe what options do you have to use that mm-hmm. now internet is there anybody can go and uh, search for information but something special i don't know what it is maybe someone has some special cooking abilities someone has some uh, uh code writing ability someone has accounting ability there is opportunity for everything mm. when i say i don't get employees which means mm-hmm. anybody willing to work there is opportunity <laughs> but that uh, within the short span which uh, earlier you in the big cities you would uh, use up in traveling probably mm. yeah two three hours in traveling yeah. yeah that is almost free now here yeah you do the same work what you did in office and the mm. traveling hours you save mm. that you can utilize for a productive purpose yeah. for learning and then applying it yeah. and uh, then you have to see which is commercially viable which one uh, gives you uh, good revenue all that things mm. part of uh, entrepreneurship yes uh, a lot of people are uh, you know a lot of this work from home employees are looking into uh, side business options one of the side business option that many people get into is uh, photography because recently i had uh, a function a family members function for just one day we had to uh, you know they had to pay around uh, 28000 rupees to the photographer i thought it was a lot but then i did some research and i found out that this is this has become normal and yes. in fact they pay a lot more also yes. and you happen to be an uh, expert in photography you have like i've seen that you click a lot of beautiful uh, pictures of butterflies and uh, uh, nature photography you even travel to other countries and click beautiful pictures so apart from being an entrepreneur you are also a photographer and a really good one so how did this happen uh, it has been a journey see mm-hmm. photography used to be my hobby uh, even when i was in college mm-hmm. the i will divert a little from the main question okay. what happens is uh, as you said you have some fixed hours where you work and earn money and you have some spare time and uh, you have to use it wisely people say i want entertainment and they sit in front of tv and waste that time mm. i would literally call it waste of time mm. unless you are into giving some uh, educational material mm. but a little bit here and there for entertainment so okay uh, that is a different thing but every day you get to 2 3 hours actually uh, normally what we say is 8 hours you work 
okay some 8 hours uh, uh, sleep another some 4 hours for daily chores that is some 20 hours where is the rest of the 4 hours mm. so if you can channelize that into something creative mm. that is learning and applying it either for profit or for your enjoyment mm. that keeps you busy mm. from uh, I have a lot of friends who started photography as a hobby, like me. Mm. I remained a hobbyist, but they migrated to being professionals. Mm. So the knowledge they got in the spare time, mm. which they used for exploited commercially. Mm. Maybe I am not interested in exploiting it commercially, but still mm. when I say I am looking at uh, retirement or things like that, it is not that retirement means you sit in a chair and uh, forget about everything. No. Mm. We have to keep ourselves occupied and that better be creative. Mm. So that uh, your uh, chronological aging is there, but your mental aging is reduced. Mm. And to keep your physical aging reduced, we have to uh, get ourselves into some activities which is uh, cycling, swimming and other things I do. Okay. And uh, okay. I am also into some kind of uh, uh, personal money management, which people call investments. Okay. And uh, also into uh, proper uh, food habits. Okay. So it, it is not like a, when we say retirement, retirement, it's not retiring from life. It is retiring from that job where I am earning money mm. and I would uh, pursue passions okay. which I wanted to do and which I could not do, which I am able to do now. Okay. Uh, from your answer, I can think of many follow-up questions which I have to ask now for my benefit and for the benefits of the audience. Definitely you welcome. Said, uh, uh, you know, chronological age will happen, but in order to remain like physically younger, some exercise and diet is important. I also hear that you are doing some diet of your own. What what kind of diet are you following? Uh, it is not my own diet as such. Mm. See, basically, I will ask you a counter question. Mm. Why do people eat? Why do people eat? Uh, it's a comp see it's easy to say people eat because they're hungry but that is not true anymore because if you eat once a day it may be enough uh, for my personal ex experience if i have to say i am very i'm little indisciplined a lot of the times when i eat i eat not because i'm hungry but because i am bored and that has health consequences also <laughs> so why do people eat everyone has their own reasons so mostly bad reasons in this uh, in the city urban life that we live in? Yeah, uh, that pretty much, uh, much sums it up. Uh, basically, it is habit plus uh, the taste or aroma or whatever. Those things, people eat because of those things. Mm, yeah. We are brought up in an environment where we are supposed to eat something. Mm. But the real need for uh, eating is first is the body needs energy to do work. Mm. Then uh, within the body, when that uh, energy is being con consumed, so many cells die mm. and so many new are generated, which means body is continuously degenerating as well as building it up. During uh, rest hours, it is building it up, mm. which needs nutrition. Mm. So basically what we need is energy plus nutrition. So what is it that uh, gives us these things? So I make a study of uh, those things. And in this field, uh, I should uh, be most thankful for Dr. Srinivas Kakilaya, mm -hmm. very good uh, physician here. And uh, he is very scientific. Mm -hmm. Never mind uh, the controversies he is facing, but uh, I f find him very scientific and uh, uh, he has devised a diet. It, what I follow is mostly that. Mm. But the philosophy behind is what I told you earlier. Mm. 
which i found to be true with his dad with so many sources mm. which i checked uh, so many online sources and uh, uh, books and all that and uh, i came to the conclusion what he recommends is the right diet and something like that i have modified it to my uh, necessity and uh, our custom of uh, cooking things and all that mm. so that is the basic uh, basically uh, we are eating excess sugar and carbohydrates mm. that needs to be given up mm. oh who opinion support that excess sugar excess carbohydrate mm. yeah beyond that uh, there are many controversies i don't want to go into details of that mm. that we can we can study and people who want to practice can study and uh, have their own philosophy of mm. what uh, nutrition is okay okay yeah i i see a lot of people getting into these kind of diets low carbohydrate diets eating more uh, protein and fat sources and uh, reducing carbohydrates processed foods and sugars and many of them i'm i'm noticing their uh, reversing some uh, issues that they had from a lot of time they're yes, able to yes. sleep better they're able to feel better have you uh, have you attained any of this like definitely okay see uh, it is about uh, nearly one and a half uh, years plus now mm-hmm. since i changed my diet okay. uh, i was uh, at that time uh, 77 kg Mm. now i am 60 kg wow okay. 17 kg is gone mm. but uh, i am that much more uh, agile i am that much more active i have that much more energy mm. and uh, mentally i am more peaceful mm. this sugar is the thing which uh, makes us uh, hungry and uh, uh, impatient minute you give up sugar you calm down mm. you get good sleep i can exercise more lot of benefits i have found and uh, no going back okay definitely yeah. and people uh, who have some issues like blood pressure diabetes and all those things which are the root cause of all other things mm. they can be controlled uh, without medicine mm. so i was having despite my activities i was having borderline bp but the uh, doctor had told any more you will have to take tablets mm. but uh, that went away oh, i never took yeah. tablets but people uh, i have some people who along with me who had started they were taking bp tablets sugar uh, diabetes tablets they were able to stop it now and still uh, have those things in, in control Mm. definitely that much better life for you will have okay yeah yeah that's But, good uh, to know some study has to be done and uh, you have to study some proper i am not telling you people should follow fad diets mm. we should have a method we should study the, study it well and use it properly in life mm. not because someone said something and uh, we use it and uh, it misfires no it should not be like that okay okay yeah definitely uh one more thing that you said earlier was this personal financial planning uh or investments uh what did you mean by that like uh, like uh, like what what do you do in that space hey yeah, actually uh, i told you we came from a family not so well off financially maybe other other things were there no problem about uh, uh, good values and all that uh, we always had good upbringing upbringing there, there was no shortage of basic things mm. but i never wanted to get back to that situation mm. so the minute i started earning first thing is spend less mm. and save th- something whatever we do minimum 25% of the income we have to save more better once uh, we save that what to do with that uh, saving it has to be in- invested properly with minimum risk mm. and uh, optimum return mm. so 
so if i try for maximum return maybe you run uh, into higher risk so i was into this uh, struggle all along and uh, somewhere down the line i came into contact with uh, mr gerard colas so that changed my life really and then i attended a course at uh, st aloysius college evening college uh, main uh, teacher is uh, mr pulaso and then i i already knew most of the principles but when he thought it in a proper manner i could uh, organize it better and i have been following uh, that method whatever uh, he has been telling it is simple but uh, again it is our discipline that matters and then uh, whatever i know i coach beginners anybody interested to come let us say i want to learn photography i tell them why okay i will teach you uh, investment i will teach you mm. but uh, any physical work is there then i send to some of my friends who are uh, into uh, advisory business mm. and uh, these people meet uh, once in a month which i also attend though i am not an advisor mm. i attend those meetings for my learning mm. for looking after uh, my money and uh, that also i can take as a hobby mm. to help others in this way mm. yeah so you have managed your health and your wealth properly over the past many years optimally yes yeah optimally okay uh, even i am also interested in photography but i don't know anything okay i don't know Uh, the head and tail of photography at all so for a mangalorean who has zero knowledge about ph- photography where should he start yeah, actually earlier we had a very good uh, online forum mm. uh, which was being uh, uh, managed and uh, mentored by a late dr krishnamohan prabhu mm. of pondicherry he was an expert he was a master i should say of uh, technicals of photography mm. technicals uh, art art effects and so many things he, he was an expert mm. unfortunately we lost him about a year back mm. uh, to illness that forum uh, is not active right now otherwise uh, we used to i also used to participate we used to coach people on facebook and uh, whatsapp and all that uh, on a one to one basis we used to train people mm. free right now what i can say is if someone is serious that is uh, maybe want to learn up to getting into commercial photography there is a course in st aloysius evening college mm. usually starts in july or august i am not very sure two three months evening course which is very good and we have seen so many people get into commercial uh, photography but if uh, it is for hobby uh, person like me can coach okay i can tell uh, based on uh, the person's requirement i can guide them uh, what to do how to do everything and i can get because uh, dr krishnamohan has uh, told us uh, everything of technicals in very detail so any depth technical i can go okay besides that the person has to practice and uh, then he has to learn if he has to learn formally i recommend that uh, evening college course okay uh, now let's say this person wants to take it as a hobby eventually it may or may not uh, get serious but initially they will start as a hobby but eventually they may get uh, they may invest their money and time they may convert it into a business now for this person who just wants to just want to test the waters how much do you think he should invest initially how much money what kind of a camera should he buy uh, one can start with around uh, 30 40 thousand rupees 30 thousand serious photography you can do see basically uh, we can now use mobile uh, devices and shoot uh, 
reasonable photos uh someone wants to go technical some 30 40000 rupees should be fair uh, beginning point but if one is serious uh, from the beginning maybe a lakh or two so now you see why they are charging so much for commercial uh, photography yeah <laughs> and like that it goes on see for a person like me who is very serious obviously so i go on putting money into that uh, no returns okay so it is never ending mm. so it gets uh, uh, old up uh, old uh, redundant then we change it again okay. spending all this keeps on happening but uh, as i said serious someone wants to say start maybe a lakh or two but uh, okay. you trust to others 30 40000 rupees okay that is the type of budget and one wants to uh, learn only through mobile also one can do i mean as you get good good mobiles no need of a very high end mobile but mm-hmm. somewhere in the range of uh, 40 50000 rupees you get photography quality mobiles okay so there also one can start uh, to learn the technicals from there you if one is serious they can graduate to a camera okay so either a person has to buy around 30 40000 cell phone or he has to spend 30 40000 uh, a dslr camera and start with that if he just wants to understand because with the 10 15000 cell phone if there is a peacock in the streets and if you click a picture you can only see you get only some small. yes but yeah. uh, see basically the, for a photograph to look artistic mm. the technicals of that gadget is not important mm. suppose uh, i am taking a photograph of a scenery mm. i can take with the 5000 rupees uh, camera also mm. it is the composition what is there in that uh, photography photograph or uh, what are the colors what are the hues that i can imagine what i will get in the image before i shoot mm. one can start with that also without uh, much technicals mm. techniques you can learn first okay technicals are the electronic part of it mm. techniques are how you shoot how it appears what we call as composition lighting how the light falls and why the light falls how you get a photography that you can start with a 6000 mobile also mm. not saying uh, it's not possible what i said is 30 40000 for a serious uh, technical photography okay one can start with a ordinary mobile no problem mm. okay uh, uh, but with these ordinary phones you can click a nice picture but the minute you zoom you click on the zoom option it barely shows anything like the face will be blurred the if you're clicking a picture of a bird the bird will be blurred everything will be blurred yes so it is you have to do uh, you have to do some research i think yeah that is there yeah that is beyond the scope of this uh, one hour or so but anybody is interested i can personally coach i am not into any commercial activity i don't want to charge anything for anything but okay. uh, on the job like person uh, there could be other persons like me also okay. so we can teach no issue okay uh other than photography you are also an avid cyclist you have uh, you know you cycle for many 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 kilometers and that might be one of the reasons how you are still physically young uh, so how did you begin your cycling journey see it happened like this uh, earlier uh, we used to go walking and uh, swimming mm. and uh, we used to go to this uh, corporation swimming pool which is hardly 1 kilometer from our house mm. so i used to go by car mm. i can walk but uh, by the time i come back it will be too late for office and all that so 
I would go on a car. Then we thought, uh, why not use a bicycle to go and come? Mm. And I bought one uh, second-hand bicycle from uh, one of my photography friends mm. uh, for a small sum of eight thousand rupees. Mm. Started using that, and I got so much fascinated that I upgraded that same cycle, mm. and then uh, took it as a serious hobby. Now what we do is uh, alternate days. One day we go for cycling. Second day we go for uh, swimming. Regular. Mm. Okay. Every day. Okay. Alternate day cycling. Alternate day swimming. Very much regular. And that okay. keeps us very active and agile for the whole day. Mm. Yeah. And so, then uh, somewhere we go for adventure. Mm. Normally we do about twenty-five kilometers a day. Okay. Some day I may feel I want to do hundred kilometers, two hundred kilometers. Mm. Okay. That is very rare. Maybe I once a year. But there are people who do that regularly. That is separate. But I don't. Do. Okay. Uh, can you uh, recommend some good spots, good uh, scenery spots, if a person wants to go cycling or hiking near Mangalore? Mangalore is a treasure. I would uh, mm. tell you. because we have all kinds of uh, terrain mm. you want a flat terrain which is easy to cycle you just go uh, mangalore north northwards you have a flat road up to urti mm. anywhere tanirbavi beach you go mm. beach scenery you have mm. you go to the east you have hilly area I stay in Manna Gudda. I go to the east. I straight away get into Kadri Hills. That itself is a climb. Mm. From there, uh, we can go anywhere. Like mm. we have, we have gone to guard sections. Maybe if the guard section is very distant, we go from here to the base of the guard <coughs> on a car, and then uh, we unload the bicycle from the car, and then we. Climb. Okay. So all those options are there. Uh, hills uh, here locally you have so many hills. Mm. Yeah. So hilly areas are there, flat areas are there, and uh, during uh, uh, rainy season you can ride in a rain. We go in rain. We don't wait for rain or shine. We just okay. go. Okay. Okay. Uh, one thing i've learned from you throughout this conversation is the important of socializing because you know so many people you know through you said you bought your first uh, second hand bicycle from your photography friends and from your photography friend you know from from your photography you know dr krishna mohan you know uh, shrinivas kakilaya you know gerard kola so through uh, personal financial planning i that's the one thing that i learned from you is the importance of socializing with different kinds of people yeah it is uh, basically once you socialize mm. we have to catch on to some people who are good at certain things mm. and accept them as mentors mm. and then learn from them mm. having a, a mentor protege relationship is very important mm. in any field of life so we have to uh, go around get into contact with people and uh, there may be people who are very good in a particular field that we have to identify based on our requirement and our uh, views mm. and then learn from them okay like that for example uh, cycling mm. the uh, so many people here seniors uh in the field of cycling that is not by age in the field of cycling so many senior seniors have taught me mm. i have learned from them many techniques what to do what not to do because if you do any exercise including cycling in a wrong way mm. you can end up with sports injuries mm. it has to be done properly but my real mentor uh was one 26 year old guy from Dubai. Hmm. Okay. He is a Mangalorean. Okay. 
uh, he is one of the persons who started uh, cycling club here in Mangalore. Then he migrated to Dubai for uh, better pastures. Mm. And now he settled in Dubai. So I used to learn from him mm. over uh, uh, WhatsApp. And when he came down, meet him and uh, learn from him. <laughs> okay, so all these yes. things happen. So we catch out of persons who know it, the thing properly and uh, learn from them. Mm. So having a teacher that is mentor relationship is very important. Okay. So you have socialized with many resourceful people and learned a lot from them. And now many people are learning from you also. I have definitely learned a lot uh, from this conversation, from this podcast. And uh, that concludes this podcast. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gopal Krishna Baliga, for coming on the labyrinth. Thank you, Pratham. Uh, if this can help uh, someone, uh, if this is worthwhile. Okay. I can't say I have achieved something uh, big in life in the, I don't know how people take uh, things as big or whatever. But uh, whatever uh, I have learnt in my life, mm. I, I have shared in a nutshell. Any more details people want, people can, people can always con- contact. I am on social media like uh, Instagram, I am there. Uh, Facebook, I am there. Mm. Then once a person is serious, we can always meet and uh, no issues. Okay. okay. Once again, thank you. Okay. Thank you.